In this lesson, we're going to learn how to place and build floors. Floors in Revit can go two ways. One way is, people sometimes just throw in the generic 12-inch floor that comes with Revit and that works. Some people, however, build a floor as if they were working in an application that can track materials and cut accurate sections that can update when the floor updates. Guess which person I want you to be. The objective of this exercise is to start placing floors in our model. We will drill right into the properties of our floor and build them based on their materials and thicknesses and yes, even pitch. Open the file you've been working on, or open the file called Chapter 7 and follow along. In the project browser, make sure under Floor Plans you are in Level 1. To start modeling a floor, let's go to the Architecture tab, and let's click on the Floor button. Now that we're in the Modify Create Floor Boundary Sketch mode, let's go over to the Properties and click on Edit Type. You know I don't like the generic 12-inch floor, so let's click Duplicate. Let's call it 6-inch slab on grade. Let's hit OK. For the structure, let's click on Edit. Here's how floors are broken down. We have an Edit Assembly dialog. What we have is a main structure for our floor. This will be our concrete or wood or whatever it's going to be. And that's the core boundary. On the other side of this, we can add a material to the top of this boundary. We can add a material to the bottom of this boundary. And that kind of surrounds the floor with a structure and finishes. With this floor, it's really just going to be a structure. It's going to be a 6-inch slab on grade, so there's not much going on. But we do need to specify a material. In the material, click into the By Category field and click on this little builder button, the button with the three dots. This is going to bring up our materials dialog. Let's look for some concrete. So in the browser dialog, type in concrete and see what comes up. What we want to do is have concrete cast in place gray. Once that comes up, just click OK. The thickness, let's make it 6 inches. We'll keep it as a structural material, and we'll worry about these other things a little bit later. Click OK. Click OK. Now, we need to start placing the floor into our model. There's a few different choices, but if you'll notice, we have an additional button on the draw panel that you've never seen before. It's called Pick Walls. What happens is this. We're going to pick these walls, and just like anything else in Revit, they remain dynamic. If the wall moves, the slab edge will move with it. So keep pick walls picked. And what we want to do is we want to come down to the wall and we want to make sure that we're selecting the inside face of this wall. If we zoom in really close, we'll see that the gypsum will stop at the floor, but the floor will frame into the inside of the wall. Let's go around the building and keep picking these walls. These little lines here indicate the slab direction. We're not going to really put any mesh or rebar in it, so we don't have to worry too much about that. Let's come in over here, pick here. Let's pick here, 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 and here. What happens sometimes, if you pick the wrong spots like I did, you can click on this little flip grip. That's going to flip the lines in the way you need them. Now that you have those lines in, we need to clean up a little bit. On the Modify panel, click the Trim button. Select this magenta line here and this horizontal magenta line. The next command we're going to use is going to be the Split command. Click on the Split command or type SL. Make sure Delete Inner Segment is checked on the Options toolbar. Come in here and pick that line, and then pick that line, then hit escape a couple times. Looks like I missed one wall. So I'm going to come in and click on my pick walls. I'm going to pick that wall. Notice that any overlaps, Revit seems to join up nicely. Once you have all the walls picked, hit escape. If you hit escape a couple times, one thing I like to do is I'll hover over one line and hit my tab key. And if the entire thing highlights, that means you've got a nice closed continuous loop. If you have any overlaps or gaps whatsoever, Revit will throw an error and it won't let you proceed. So you have to be very deliberate with your corners. I think we're good though. Let's go ahead and click on the Finish Edit Mode button. And we have a slab in there. 